Greetings. Multi-way lighting control using three or more light switches. How's it done? Well, there are two ways of doing it, although there's a third method shown online which doesn't work properly. More on that later. The first way you can see here uses a three core and earth cable between the light switches instead of the twin and earth normally used in British mains wiring. Each terminal on one of the two way switches goes to its corresponding terminal on the other, passing through the intermediate switch with the exception of the common terminal at the top which bypasses the intermediate entirely and can be connected through behind the switch with a block connector or a Vargo terminal. If more switches are required, that intermediate wiring is repeated as many times as is required with the two-way switches still at each end of the run. Note that there doesn't appear to be a hard and fast rule when it comes to which colour wires are used for which terminal when using three core and earth cable for wiring two or three way lighting. Look online you'll see these three used in every combination possible in both new and old wiring colours. What's important is that all three wires are capable of being at line voltage so should be marked as such. That's why you can see the brown sleeving at each terminal position. Note also that this diagram doesn't show the earth conductor for simplicity. In practice there should be an earth conductor going between all the fittings as well. With metal back boxes and or switches, there'll be a screw terminal it can connect to. For all plastic fittings, they should be connected or terminated again in, for example, a block connector or a Vargo terminal. This method of wiring, with the extra cable core, is useful if going from a single switch to multi-switch operation, as the wiring between the switch and the light doesn't need to be replaced, just one wire needs to be moved and the extra cabling and switch is added. Here you can see the eight different positions the switch can be in for a three-switch setup. Toggling any one of the switches, regardless of the position of the other switches, will toggle the status of the light. And here we've got it set up for real, albeit on a low voltage DC supply. As it's only 12 volts DC, we can get away with using these switches. If you want to see why you can't use 250 volt AC rated switches on a 200 odd volt DC supply, I'll put a link up in the corner here. Arcs and sparks, well worth a watch. We've got power coming into a junction box. In practice, that could also be another ceiling rose feeding another light, or it could be back at the consumer unit. The reason I've included that on this board will become apparent later on in the video. As you can see, like in the diagrams, every switch press will toggle the light, regardless of which switch you press. In this case, with all the switches in the up position, the light is on. If you want to change this, and all you have to do is swap the L1 and L2 wires in one of the two-way switches. The far end is probably the easier one, as there's less wiring in there. Unscrewing the covers, we can see the connections at the back of each, with the line conductor coming from the ceiling rose back to the closest switch, and the switched line conductor, sleeved in brown here, coming back and connecting to the bulb. The colour coding on the two two-way switches matches like for like, unless, like I said, you want to change whether the light is on or off in the all switches up or all switches down position. This is using the old red, yellow and blue cable, simply because that's why I've got lying around. A new installation would have brown, black and grey instead. What's interesting here, and is the reason I didn't label the terminals on the diagram, is the intermediate switch. This has two connections marked L1 and two marked L2. So the L1 to L1 conductor goes through the L1 terminals and the L2 goes through the L2 terminals. Right? Wrong. For these ones, one cable connects to both the L1 terminals at one end, the other cable connects to both the L2 terminals at the other end. Get it wrong, and whereas in one position, the two-way lighting circuit will behave as normal, in the other position, it will join L1 and L2 together, override the other switches and jam the light on. So that's one wiring method. I said there was another one, and here it is. The second way you can see here uses the twin and earth normally found in British mains wiring. Only the L1 and L2 terminals are passed from switch to switch. Once again, if more switches are required, that intermediate wiring is repeated as many times as is needed, with the two-way switches still at each end of the run. For this method, the line conductor goes to the switch at one end of the run, and is connected to the common terminal on the switch. The switched line conductor is taken from the switch at the other end of the run. The incoming line conductor could come from the same ceiling rows and just take a different route, or it could just as easily come from a junction box or a neighbouring switch in a multi-gang switch. The advantage of this wiring method is that it's using the cheaper twin and earth cable. In old installations you might even find single core cable used. This is one set of switches in my house, in fact it's right next to where I'm recording. And you can see that one uses the two core and earth method of doing two way wiring with the single core going to the supply. The other circuit was added later when converting the room from single to three way operation and is wired in three core and earth. 
If two core cable is used for the line or the switch line, the second core can be used to bring a neutral conductor to the switch, if the switch is a fancy electronic one or a time switch that needs it, otherwise it's probably best left unused. Again, you can see the eight different positions the switch can be in for a three switch setup. Toggling any one of the switches, regardless of the position of the other switches, will toggle the status of the light. Back to the bench, and this time we've got power coming into the left hand switch, coming from the junction box. Again, in practice, that could also be a ceiling rose feeding another light, could be back at the consumer unit, could be the same ceiling rose taking a different route, whatever. Again, as you can see, like in the diagrams, every switch press will toggle the light regardless of which switch you press. Unscrewing the covers once more, we can see the connections at the back of each, with the line conductor coming in from the junction box to the closer switch, and the switch line conductor at the other end feeding the ceiling rolls. The colour coding on the two two-way switches is like for like, unless, like I said, you want to change whether the light is on or off in the all switches up or all switches down position, in which case you swap a pair over. Once again, I'm using old cable with new sleeving, simply because that's what I've got lying around, a scrap cable. A new installation would have brown and blue instead. Getting the connections wrong on the intermediate switch this time would result in the intermediate overriding the other switches and locking the light off because there'd be no path from one end switch to the other. So that's the two ways of wiring multi-way switches. But why did I bother doing this video? This is a video that's come about due to some pretty lousy misinformation found online and surprise surprise it's on Facebook where such stuff is allowed to proliferate with Zuckerberg's blessing along with catfish accounts and other scams that they refuse to remove because they make too much money from it. What popped up in my news feed the other day was this. This so-called electronic and electrical engineering page posts various misinformation such as over unity devices and so on. The post, article and video this time are all about multi-way lighting control. So we're not just talking garbage this time, we're talking mains voltage garbage. Here's my version of that wiring diagram. And though when running through the options there are states where it seems to work, there are several switch states which render one of the other three switches inoperable. Back to the bench, here's that setup in practice. And as shown in the diagrams, there are numerous settings where switches are deactivated. Like I said, garbage. So that's my take on it. If you want proper, more reputable electrical training videos, I'll chuck a link down in the video description to someone who does them. Thanks for watching.